God is good and all the time. Amen. I want to welcome all those on social media to the Way Family Christian Center. I pray that you will be blessed and that you will receive what God has for you today. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing your church to enter this place. Father, we praise you. We worship you. We give you all the glory. Father, we've had a week, Lord, that it was blessed, Lord God, regardless of the situation. Regardless of what we see, we know that you have been with us, Lord. You have been with this country. You have been with his children, Lord God, protecting them and looking over them. Father, I pray at this moment, Lord. Father, that we would just put everything aside. That we will empty ourselves completely, Lord, and be ready to receive and be filled with a new anointing and a new touch in our lives, Father. Father, I pray that you will pour out your spirit as we empty out everything that has gone out this week and gone on in our lives, Lord. Father, that we will put it aside. Lord, that we will come to you with an attitude of prayer and praise. Father, thanking you, Lord God. Father, fill us today with your with your spirit. Move in our lives, Lord God. For those that are homesick, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I claim healing for you. That you will see receive the healing power of our Savior, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the miracle that you've done, that you're going to continue to do, Father, and for the full restoration of our brothers and sisters. Father, we ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. If you can turn with me to Psalm 81, I would appreciate it. Amen. And the word of God reads as follows. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Begin the music. Strike the temple. Melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram horn at the new moon. And the decree of Israel. An ordinance of the God when God eats it as a statue for Joseph. I heard an unknown voice say, Remove the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of the thunder clouds. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear me, my people, who want you. If you would, you shall have. You shall not worship any god other than me. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth, and I will fill it. But my people will listen to me. Israel submit to me. So I gave them over to the stubborn hearts. To follow their own. If you people would only. If you would only follow my ways. How quickly I would subdue their enemies. And turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord. Would cringe before him. And their punishment will last forever. But you will be fed. With the finest of wheat. With honey from the rock. I will satisfy you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We stand on your promises. Father, we've seen what you've done for Israel. Lord God, as you're doing for us today, Father, as long as we serve you and we put no other gods before you, Father, you are going to bless us, Lord God. And regardless of the time that we are living in, you will provide and make a way for us. Father, in that we stand, in that we hold on to, Lord, on your promises. Lord, move in our lives today. I pray for Evelyn, Lord God, as she leads us into the throne room of worship. Father, use her mightily. We ask this in your holy, precious name. Amen and amen.
Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We praise you. Te adoramos, Señor. Te glorificamos, Dios mío. We come at this time, Lord, not to be here to, to just make noise, but to sing and to worship and bless your holy name. Father, we glorify you, Jesus. Te adoramos, Señor. Te exaltamos, Señor. And we pray, Father, that you move by your spirit this morning as we are here. Señor, pedimos que tú te muevas de una manera por tu espíritu aquí en estos momentos. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Gracias, Señor. We love you, Lord. Te amamos, Señor. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now the next song we're going to sing, el próximo corito que vamos a cantar es Draw Me Close. Señor, ayúdame a acercarme más a ti. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. <laughs>
can say, oh, sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen. That he's all that we want. Amen. Amen. Cuando nosotros decimos que Él es todo lo que queremos, He's all that we need, es lo único que nosotros necesitamos, is the Lord in our lives. As we worship, mientras adoramos, vamos a decirle al Señor, let's tell the Lord, Lord, you're all I want, you're what I need right now. Tú eres lo que yo necesito en estos momentos. Hallelujah. And as we sing the last song, we're going to be having help from the choir and the TV. Just worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We love you, Savior. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Get out of the way so everybody can see. Hallelujah. Here, moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker. How many believe this? Cuanto saben que eres la luz en la tiniebla. Hallelujah. Who you are. Sas tocando mi corazón. Te adoraré, te adoraré. Aquí estás sanando mi corazón. Te adoraré, te adoraré. Milagroso abres camino. Cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Declaramos milagroso, abres camino, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Así eres tú. Así eres tú, así eres tú, así eres tú, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Siempre estás. Siempre está sobrando. You never stop. You never stop working. 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 He will make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Miracle, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Amen. God never changes his promises. Hallelujah. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, because you make a way for each and every one of us, Lord God. Father, we have stood, Lord God, in in times of peril, in times of times of insecurity, in times of not knowing what is going to happen, Lord. But you have always made a way for us. And God, I know that you can make a way for those people right now that are standing in front of obstacles that they think that they they cannot be overcome. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, that you will move those mountains, Lord God. Father, that you will tear down those strongholds. Lord, that you will pour out your spirit and let them know that you are with them and that you will not forsake them and you will always be by them. I pray for my the Ortiz family, Lord God, that suffered a big loss to, of, the, of their husband, their, their father, their grandfather and friend. Father, I pray that you will strengthen them, Lord God. Father, that you will fill them, Lord God, with your spirit. I know, Lord, even though there was hurt there on Friday, Lord God, I felt the peace of the Lord there consoling the family and giving them strength. Father, bless them. I pray for Carmen, Pastor Carmen, Lord, as she leads her church, Lord God. Father, I pray that you will fill her more than ever before with your Holy Spirit. Give us strength to move on, Lord, and for that church to come around her and lift her up, Lord. I thank you, my Savior. Lord, because you are faithful, I know you're going to see them through, Lord God, as you have seen us through. In the name of Jesus, we ask all this. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Wonderful, 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 wonderful day it is. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. Uh, we've had a, a wonderful week um, of God's blessing, God preparing. I don't know how many got on worship this Wednesday. Uh, we, I did a half hour in English, a half hour in Spanish. Uh, and then something happened. The video went, so I turned the camera. Then I fixed it and I came back. Uh, but we got it going, and I pray that you will bless. Um, I'm not the best singer, and sometimes I forget the words, but the main thing is that we do the best for God, amen, and that we make a joyful noise unto him, and I pray uh, that you guys are blessed. Um, uh, Bible study, um, we're going to postpone everything now until September uh, as we get new material, uh, Sunday school, uh, I will be talking to, uh, I'm praying that God's going to bring people that we need so that we can continue our Sunday school and minister. Um, this week, uh, we will have prayer. Uh, Wednesday night, there will be worship. Okay, there will be the Spanish and the English. Thursday, there's no Bible study, but Friday, uh, there will be food pantry. I will be here. And um, we were going to do a car wash on Saturday. Okay, we were, okay? But a lot of the, uh, the teenagers are going to be gone. And the only one that will be cleaning the cars will be Pastor Felix. <laughs> so what I'm going to do uh, this week, I'm going to be calling up and find out what evening is good uh, for the men, certain men. I might have to do it in, in shifts. Uh, I like to take them out to dinner, Okay. And, uh, and, and bless them that way and say happy Father's Day um, to those that can't. Because um, I can't be washing all the cars, so it's just not physically possible. And uh, so um, you will be getting a phone call from me. And uh, Ray, I expect you to come with me, okay? All right, good. <laughs> all right, and uh, so... Uh, I, we will be going out for Father's Day. I know Brother Portillo works in the evening, so I know he's off on Friday, so maybe we go for a lunch. And Mario works on Saturday, but I'll find uh, Mario maybe in the evening that I can go out with him. And my son Felix is always available for me whenever I ask him. <laughs> and um, so we'll go out one day this week, my son and I and Jerry. Um, so, M. E. Emmanuel Castro, okay, para salir, uh, para comer, para el día de padres, okay, so va a ser durante la semana, yo lo voy a sacar, okay? So, it'll be uh, the ways to gift to you, 
okay, and uh, for all your work and, 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 and your sacrifices and your giving that you do to our church, we want to say thank you. Maybe one day the, the women will do a breakfast for us, you know, I'm just, <laughs> so I'm waiting for that, okay, um, so maybe plan for next year, <laughs> okay, and um, our our picnic was moved from the from the 14th to the 21st. They called me this week and said that apparently somebody else had already had the 14th and they didn't write it down. So we do have August the 21st from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, please come prepared. Bring a covered dish to pass, and you will get wet. Okay, I promise you that. Uh, it is a time that we have a good time. Uh, our kids roll down the hills. They slide down the hill. We have water guns and we have w whatever it is. And we always have plenty of food. And I pray that you will come and, and be blessed with us. Okay. And uh, I think I covered everything. Oh, and f people have been coming um, uh, during the week and uh, doing various things. So if you want to clean, if you want to help out on the yard, uh, we do have to fill up half of that box out there with stones from our property. So if someone wants to come and help carry some stones and put it into that box out there so we can fill it up with topsoil and then uh, plant our uh, the flowers out there. So. But there's always something to do. I, I need to organize the garage a little bit more. Um, I need to take those chairs that are in there. They need to be clean. They need to be vacuumed. Uh, and then I want to cover them again to protect them. So there's always something to do. And uh, I want you to feel a part uh, of the ministry. Uh, so it's not, it's, when God calls us, he calls us to do many things. Okay, And sometimes we got to get our hands dirty. And, and we have to do what we got to do. Amen. Amen. So today, we are going to go again into the Old Testament. And God has been preparing us for nine years. Okay, we are going to have our nine-year anniversary this September 13th. And uh, God has prepared us. And, and we're ready. Yeah, we are ready. We have survived. Um, thank God we never had a split in the church. We've always had a harmonious uh, group of people. But COVID hit and uh, it just changed everything. But yet we're still here today. We are still here. We're still existing. And people are faithful. And again, I want to thank you for those that are giving. And if, we, if the Way Family Christian Center has blessed you and we are feeding you and, and you feel a part of us, Go to the Way Family Christian Center, our website, click and, and give and help us um, to so that we may, may continue to meet our bills. Uh, we just sent out the last payment on our on our uh, heating bill. That was eight hundred and forty eight dollars. Uh, and that took a nice chunk out. But anyway, we we were able to pay and I thank God for that. And uh, but, you know, there's still things we need to do. But anyway, God has called us. To make an impact and to make an impact where we are in the city, okay, in our city, in our town, and, and most important, in our homes, God wants us to make an impact. How many know the story of Jonah? Jonah, what happened to Jonah? Mario, what happened to Jonah? Tell me. He got what? He got eaten by a whale because he did not obey God. Yes. All right. Yes. And Joseph. I yes, that's right. God sent.
Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're ready to preach the sermon. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so we know that the story about Jonah. Okay, Jonah was a man that God had called him, and God gave him a specific message. He told them to go to Nineveh and and tell them that I am that he was going to destroy them if they not if they did not turn to them. And we and a lot of times we look at the thing that most impacts of our lives about the book of Jonah was about a fish eating Jonah. But let me tell you, Jonah was a reluctant prophet. Nineveh was a wicked city. But God was a loving father. Okay, and those are the three things that we see in the book of Jonah. So we know that Jonah and the book of Jonah is not spectacular because of the big fish. It was something greater. It was that God had the power to transform a whole city. That's the big thing we need to take away from this. That God through his grace and mercy he saw Nineveh that was in depredation, in sin, and truly they needed to be judged like all of us. How many of us? Right? We don't even want to say what we were into or what we thought about, where our mind was in the gutter, but yet God through his grace and mercy reached down to us as he reached down to Nineveh and they received salvation. Hallelujah. So when we go to Jonah, chapter 2, I'm sorry, Jonah 3, chapter uh, verses 3, verses 1 through 1 through 10. Okay, I'm going to read this real quick. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a large city. It took, day, it took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city proclaiming Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself in sackcloth and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from their fierce anger so that we all not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. So we see that God is a merciful God. One thing that I know, we cannot run away from the duty that God has called us. When God calls you and he gives you a ministry, you are not to run away. Because one way or another, God is going to grab hold of you and you are going to have a fish encounter. 
You're going to have a critical crisis in your life. Something is going to grab hold of you. And remember, as I started to read it, that the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. So what happened the first time? And it says in Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found the ship bound for the port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed from Tarshish to flee from the Lord. And let me tell you, to be a messenger from God is not easy. Parents, we ha you have one of the strongest pulpits in the world. God has called you to reach your city, to reach your home, to reach your family. And it's not easy. And they're going to fight you. Oh, there he goes again. Daddy with the Bible. Daddy with the worship. Daddy with this and that about the Lord, that God is going to be faithful. We need to, regardless of how hard it is, we need to bring the word of God to our home. And it wasn't easy for Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh and cry out against it and its practices. It wasn't easy for him. So what did he do? He tucked tail and ran. What did I do? When God told me I needed to go prepare myself, when I, when he said to me, you don't know me, and I had to go. I find I, I reached I registered for school, then I said I was not gonna go. That I wasn't gonna go, that it was too expensive. I pulled a Jonah and God sent a fish and grabbed hold of me. And I was shaken. There I was in the belly of the fish, and I did not know what was going to happen to my life. So when, we, when God brings a sign to us, we have to be confident that it is a sign from God. So the sign that Jonah had, then some of the Pharisees, uh, if we go to Matthew 12, 38 to 41, then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign for, from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation ask for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the hearts of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with the generation and condemn it. For they repented and the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. We have a sign, and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Jonah had a sign. He was in the belly of the fish. I would have been in there, Lord, how did I get myself into this mess? But Jonah knew that he was disobedient. While he was in the midst of the stomach juices of that big whale, and the seaweed was covering him and he felt like he was gagging in the midst of that. He said, Lord, I hear you. I hear you. Jonah has had a critical crisis. You say, well, what do you mean critical? Yeah, because it grabbed his attention. It was a crisis. He had to do something. How many of us, we find ourselves in, in that crisis and what do we do? 
Oh my, oh me, pity me. And we tell everybody of all our suffering. And what, but instead, we need to fall on our knees and trust God and say, Lord, deliver me. I will follow you. What is, what is it that you're trying to teach me? God is calling us, and he says, I want you to go and t- save a city. Say, work on your family. Work in your community. Work in your job. That is the pulpit that I am providing for you. Jonah had a critical crisis. In John 20, 30, 31, it it reads as follows. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants us to live the most fulfilled life that we can possibly live. Even in the midst of anguish and loss, you can still have the joy of the Lord. And I thank God for his resurrection because he lives, I live. Because he has overcome Death, I will be one day in the presence of my father in heaven. I know my brother Eddie is in heaven singing. I'll never forget the day that he sang the song on Christmas, Mary, did you know? I'll never forget. I said, where has my brother Eddie been hiding those vocal cords? It was like I was in the pr- uh, listening to... Uh, angelic uh, voice as, as he sang those songs. And I know that I'm going to see Eddie one day. Eddie's family is going to see him one day. That is the promise because Jesus resurrected and provided eternal life for us. He, we will be there in his presence. So what is God calling us? He's calling us to preach the word. We want to change a city. We want to change a a county. We want to change a state. We want to change the United States of America. We want to change the world. We need to preach the word. But it starts at home. Hallelujah. Our children need to know where to fall back on. It's not to the video games. It's not to the entertainment Know that they need to trust on the Lord and wait on the Lord. So we need to preach the word. Jonah goes to Nineveh in Jonah 3.2. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it. Proclaim to it the message I give you. Not his message, but the message that God gave him. And it was hard. He said, in 40 days, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed. The power to transform lives from sinners to saints is in the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only thing that can change the lives of individuals. We can write all the laws we want for gun control But the only law that would change is the love of God. For us to learn to love one another as he loved us. This country, this world needs Jesus. We're going to be seeing more and more killing, more depredation. It's going to get worse before it gets any better. And when it gets better, it's because our Lord is here. We need to be ready. And then God says that we need to preach the word, not be ashamed. We need not to be ashamed. It says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Imagine, they are trying to silence us. They're trying to shame us into silence. 
Oh, you can't talk about church. You can't talk about the Lord. But you can talk about every single other depredation that there is in this world. It's okay. Disney has changed its all his all its design. It's all about the LGBT. Our schools are changing. They're bringing pornographic material to teach our children about sexual education, alternative living. That is straight from the pit of hell. We need to stand against that. We need to preach the gospel. They're going to call us lunatics, but that's okay. I'm a lunatic for the Lord. And God loves the homosexual. He does. He wants them to turn from their sinful ways. As he asked me to turn from my sinful ways. In my perfect no. But I know that I have been saved through the grace of God. And that I try my hardest. Not to indulge in anything that is sinful, but in my perfect no. Do I get angry? Yes. Do improper thoughts once in a while come into my mind? Yes. And I fight them, and I I say, Lord, forgive me. The other day, somebody cut me off, and I had a few choice words, and right away, I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. I did not have to go to that did not have to go to that extreme, but yet I went. And right away, I got a check in my spirit. I said, Lord, forgive me. That was not necessary. It was not necessary at all. And God wants us. Sorry. I waited too long. So God wants us not to be ashamed. Not to be ashamed. To go and tell them, yes, you're not going to be accepted. You might be rejected. You might be taken off of your social media platform. That's okay. But remember that everything that we do and everything that we, how we live our lives, we have to remember who we represent. We represent the Father in heaven. We represent Christ the spirit of the Lord is supposedly living in us, we have to act accordingly. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. People say, how were you able to keep your doors open? It's Jesus. I don't know the answer. I just know that God has provided for us. We've seen answer prayer. Two years praying, and God answers. We've seen answered prayer for Dio's mother. What the enemy wanted to destroy, how his mother came through the operation, how God provided the funds that they needed in order to, for her to have the operation. It's not because of Portillo's the greatest man in the world. No, because he's a child of God. It's all about Jesus. We serve God, God takes care of us. God makes a way, he opens the door. I know this is something that you're probably going to say, it really has nothing to do with it. But anyway, my son was putting a hitch on a car yesterday. And I said, oh, Lord. (laughs) And I said, I know he's going to have problems. So I said a little prayer. I said, Lord, let that bolt go in so he doesn't have to call me. (laughs) And when he sent me that picture, he said, Dad is done. And I thank God. I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I know it's simple, but it's Jesus. I know that I, I, I trust everything to the Lord. And I wanted him to be able to get that done. And and he felt good about himself that he was able to do that and take care of that. If anyone speaks, they should do so 
as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. When you serve, Sharon, don't, don't you just do it all, with all your heart for the Lord? Elisa, cuando tú limpias la iglesia, don't you serve you know, unto the Lord? It's unto Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Portillo, when you were out there cutting the grass, Felix, when you serve in the back, and Victoria and Evelyn with the singing, okay, and Monica in the kitchen, everybody has something to do. But we do it unto Jesus because it's all about Jesus. It's not about pastor. Pastor's not that faithful. Jesus is always faithful. He will never fail. I will fail you, unfortunately. I will try my best, but I will try my best never to fail, but I know that I am not perfect. But Jesus will never fail you. He will never let you go. And another thing is, it's something that pastors beat themselves down. We want to see the community transform. We want to see the word of God reach people. But we do not bring salvation. We just bring the message. Salvation comes from the Lord. So we go, God tells us to do what we have to do. Preach the word that he has given us to preach. But only he can bring salvation. And it says in 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 4, in the presence of God, and Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead. And in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them and gather numbers of teachers to say what is itching their ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth, truth and turn aside to myths. We need to preach God's word. We need to be that constant symbol out there bringing God's word because if not the enemy is bringing out his own teaching he's bringing out his own message to lead those away and many of them they would they will hear what they want they will go wherever they hear everything anything that is just pleasing to their ear we don't have a lot of fluff and stuff. But one thing I know, we have the love of the Lord in this church. We might not have smoke or big, huge screen TVs. We might not have a full choir. But we have people that love the Lord. We have people that serve the Lord with all their hearts. And I thank God for that, that God has bring, brought us authentic people people that love the Lord and want to serve him and that we know that we can do what God tells us to do but he is the one that's going to bring salvation so we need we not not to be afraid of of a message that's confrontational right now if you post something on Facebook about saving a child from abortion or uh you Sometimes you just get attacked outright. But we cannot be afraid about. There are messages that are difficult. But we know that God's grace is sufficient. And we need to let people know that. I know many people that have struggled with things that they have done and myself, 
But I have to say, Lord, thank you because your grace is sufficient. I've been forgiven. So we have to, even though it's confrontational, it might hurt sometimes to speak about it. But we do it with love and kindness in the spirit of the Lord to bring the message of the gospel to those that are lost. I don't know about you, but I feel the urgency. I don't know if you look at the news and you, and you see what's happening. You can't even go on the train. I mean, you can't go anywhere in the city of New York. You got to be careful. You got to be vigilant. There's an urgency. God is coming soon. The devil is lashing out in whichever way that he can. And he wants his people. The devil wants the people to be afraid. In Jonah 3, 2 to 4, Jonah goes to Nineveh. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a large city. It took three days to go through. Imagine now he was obedient. He was shouting it as he was going through that city so that everyone would hear. He knew that if not, souls were going to die. In Colossians 4, 5, it says, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. People are watching us. As we deal with the outsider, work with grace and mercy. Bring the message of the gospel of love, that Jesus died for them, and that Jesus loves them. It is important. In 1 Corinthians 15, 34, it says, Come back to your senses, and you ought, and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. God wants us to stop sinning. And we need to compel those to listen. It is important that we compel those people to listen. Let them listen to the way we live our lives, the way we speak to them, the way we love on them. God wants us to get his message out, to save our city. In Luke 14, 23, and I end with this. Then the master told his servant, go out to the road and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. God is calling us to go out to the road and compel our neighbors to come in, compel our families to come in. If all of us were to talk to our friends and our family members, this place will be packed. If we can just speak to them and just share the love of God, invite them, this place will be packed. So the responsibility of Nineveh was to repent. The responsibility of judgment belonged to God and only God. The responsibility of Jonah, like it is our responsibility also, was to obey God's message to us, his proclamation to us, to go and take the gospel to those that are lost. We need to obey his command because salvation comes from the Lord. We just need to do our job. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, Father, because you have called us to do a work. First, Lord, you've called us to draw closer to you so that your Holy Spirit can work in our lives. Then you called us, Lord, to bring your message to our city, our home, our family. Father, that they would serve you with all their heart and soul. Let us not grow weary on repeating ourselves. Let us do it with love, joy, and peace. And Father, into our communities, into our jobs, into our, our uh, acquaintances, Lord. 
Father, let us be that symbol saying that the day of the Lord is coming. The trumpet will sound and you are going to come back and to get your church. Father, that they will be ready also. Father, I praise you. I worship you. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a song that I wanted to put it on one, please. I pray you would be blessed with this. I want us, why don't we all stand and we'll close with this. I hope that you will be blessed. By your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing the words with me. By the Spirit of the Lord. Not by might, nor by power, by your Spirit, God. Send your Spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your Spirit, God. Send your Spirit, God. Hallelujah. No con fuerza ni poder. Hallelujah. Sing it. Hallelujah. You are the fire. We are the temple. You are the voice. We are your song. You are a God. We are your people. You are the life. We stand in awe. We stand in all of you. We stand in all of you. Hallelujah. By my, not by power, by your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Only you, Lord God, can bring transformation to the lives of the individual. Your spirit, God. By your spirit, God. Pour out your spirit on us, Lord. Hallelujah. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. You hold us out, out of the darkness into your love into your life grace upon grace beauty for ashes you come to us we come alive hallelujah we all of you yes lord we stand in all of you yeah. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Bring your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. By my ni poder, manda espíritu. Manda espíritu, no por fuerza ni poder. Manda espíritu, manda espíritu. Breathe, hallelujah. Come and breathe on us. Breathe on us. Spirit, breathe. Come and breathe on us. On us, Lord, come and breathe on us. Spirit, breathe. Oh, we breathe on us. Breathe. Come and breathe on us. 
we breathe, come and breathe on us, breathe, breathe on us, Lord, hallelujah, we praise you, Savior, Holy Spirit, uh, we thank you, Father, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, my Savior, hallelujah, yes, Lord. And in all of you, we, we stand in all of you. Father, hallelujah. Father, we know, Lord, that in our own strength, Lord God, we cannot make any changes, Lord, but by your spirit, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, and by you have pr what you have promised in your word for each and every one of us, that us and our house will be saved, Lord God, hallelujah. Father, we stand on those promises, but we know that it's only through your spirit, Father, that liberation and transformation can come to all of us, Lord God. Move in our midst, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Let us live in the reality, Lord God, that your power is the same today as it was in the ancient days, hallelujah, that you can change and transform power, lives, Lord God. Hallelujah, Father, I pray for each life that is out there, Lord, that does not know you, that they will come to know you as their personal Savior. Jesus loves you as he loves us, and he wants you to accept him as his Savior. If you just say this prayer after me, say, Jesus, I am a sinner that is lost. I accept your sacrifice and your shedding of blood for the forgiveness of my sin. If you said those words and say, Lord, I, I accept you as my Savior. You are born again today. I pray that you will find a good Bible teaching church where they can come alongside you and help you in, in your walk with the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Father, thank you. We don't leave your presence, Lord God, but we will leave this place. Father, I pray that your anointing and that your spirit will be with us wherever we go. And that we remember who we represent. That we represent the, the Father in heaven. Our Savior Jesus, hallelujah. And his Holy Spirit guides us, Lord, as we walk our daily lives. Help us, Father, to bring your message to this city. Father, we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Sanctifier, Jesus Christ, our Healer, and Jesus Christ, our soon-coming King. Amen and amen. And